top of its first hill going 3 meters per second, and when it reaches the bottom of that hill, it's going 23 meters per second. Our question is, how tall is the hill? For this, we're going to use conservation of energy. We use conservation of energy whenever we know something about an object at one spot, like we know how fast it's going and we know where it is, and we're trying to find out things about it at another spot. Like in this spot at the top of the hill, we know how fast it's going, but we don't know where exactly it is. We don't know how high it is off the ground, and that's what we're going to try and find. So we start off with our conservation of energy equation, which is the initial potential energy and kinetic energy of the object at the first location is going to be equal to the potential energy and kinetic energy of the object at the second location. From here, what we're going to do is cancel out or cross out anything that we know the object doesn't have. So initially, we know that the, that the roller coaster is up on top of the first hill, so it definitely has gravitational potential energy, so that's going to stay. It's also moving at 3 meters per second, so we know it's got kinetic energy, so that's going to stay. We look at the second location and say, does it have gravitational potential energy? It's as low as it's going to be in this problem. So I'm going to say that this is my zero point. It's at the lowest point, it's at the ground level, so it's going to have no gravitational potential energy, so I can cancel out my PE2. But it is moving, so kinetic energy is going to stay. So KE2 remains in our problem. Now I'm going to write down each of the equations for potential energy and kinetic energy for our equation. So our potential energy equation is M, G, H and H is what we're trying to find. Then we have the kinetic energy, which is one half m, and that initial velocity, I'll call it v1, squared. That's going to equal the other kinetic energy, which is one half m, and the other velocity at the final, v2 squared. What we have in each term, you might notice, is an m. So if I divide both sides by m, my m terms cancel out. So it does not matter what the mass of the roller coaster is. That's just going to go away. And when I rewrite, I get gh plus 1 half v1 squared equals 1 half v2 squared. Now we're trying to solve for h, so I'm going to redo the algebra to rearrange this equation to get h all by itself. So the first thing I have to do is subtract my 1 half v1 squared to the other side. So on the left side I have gh, and that's going to equal 1 half v2 squared minus one half v1 squared. And now I just need to divide by g, and I'll be able to get h. So just to make this a little bit easier, instead of rewriting everything, save some time. Just divide g to the other side, and that's the equation that I get. Now we just have to plug in our numbers and solve. And the way that will look, h is going to equal one half V2 is 23 meters per second, and we're squaring that, minus 1 half, and V1 is 3 meters per second, and we square that, all over 9.8 meters per second squared. And I want to plug all that into my calculator, I get a height of 26 and a half meters.